Competition policy or antitrust policy as it's called in the US revolves around ensuring that competition within firms in a particular market is not restricted in ways that are detrimental to the economy. Competition law is typically separated into three different areas, abuse of dominance, anti-competitive practices, and mergers and acquisitions. An abuse of dominance, as the name implies, is when a dominant player in a particular market, in other words a monopoly or oligopoly, acts in a way that restricts competition within the market. Anti-competitive practice is defined as a situation where a firm engages in an activity that has an effect of restricting or preventing competition. This includes price fixing, exclusive dealing and tight selling. Issues related to competition can be categorized into two pillars. The first pillar deals with competition being stifled due to the actions of the government, while the second pillar encompasses the anti-competitive behaviors of firms. A good competition policy will tackle both of these pillars separately. While Sri Lanka does have a fairly sufficient competition law, it presently lacks a comprehensive competition policy. The existing legislation framework is the Consumer Affairs Authority Act of 2003, which repelled the Fair Trade Commission's Act of 1987. This law does have provisions for abuse of dominance and anti-competitive trade practices. It does not, however, have provisions for mergers and acquisitions. The enforcement of this law is another issue. Sri Lanka's competition authority, the Consumer Affairs Authority, is ill-equipped to handle matters relating to anti-competitive e-practices. But the deficiencies in the law need to be addressed. The competition authority, as it stands right now, does not have the required institution capabilities to successfully investigate and adjudicate on anti-competitive practices. The Consumer Affairs Authority lacks autonomy as it comes under the purview of a ministry and staff appointments are made by the minister. It is therefore susceptible to undue political influence. The CCA is also relied on budget allocations to operate. The lack of adequate finances creates capacity issues by limiting the ability of the authority to hire qualified and experienced legal staff who can competently handle cases related to anti-competition. As staff are underpaid, it leaves them open to the possibility of corruption. The fact that the Consumer Affairs Authority has not taken a single anti-competitive practices case in the past 10 years is indicative of these issues. The CCA suffers from a lack of transparency wherein the procedures of carrying out raids and investigations are discretionary and therefore has made it difficult to gain the trust of the public. Another issue is the lack of awareness among the general public of CCA and the work it does, and in fact, what anti-competitive practices are. This has resulted in few people finding complaints with the CAA, either because they are not knowledgeable on the consumer rights that they are afforded by the Act or are unaware on how CCA can help them address with their concerns. While they do carry out some awareness campaigns, these impacts are limited. It is important to note that the government intervention can also restrict competition in the marketplace. State-owned enterprises, for example, are present in several industries in Sri Lanka and in many instances are a dominant player in the market. State-owned enterprises often benefit from undue advantage by way of government subsidies and tax breaks, which stifle competition. The lack of competition policies means that these practices go unchecked. Why is this important? The key objective of competition policy is to promote competition in a free open market. It aims to provide a level playing field for firms to operate in. Competition leads to an efficient allocation of scarce resources, low prices for consumers and the maximization of social welfare. In a dynamic market, competition includes technological inventions and improves product quality and variety and leads to gaining productivity. It reduces government intervention that distorts market forces. Currently, the privatization of state-owned enterprises is one of the most discussed topics in the country and is considered as one of the major structural reforms needed to help Sri Lanka overcome its economic crisis. However, due to the deficiencies in the competition law and the body mandated regulating competition, there is a possibility these SOEs could transit from government monopolies to private sector monopolies. To avoid this and to foster competition, the deficiencies in the CCA law must be addressed along with the CCA's institutional capabilities. Having a strong competition policy creates a good business environment, encouraging investments and FDIs. In conclusion, the need for a robust competition policy cannot be denied. 
This policy serves as a vital regulatory framework preventing anti-competitive practices, improving market dynamics, and ultimately resulting in a long economic prosperity. Stay tuned for Advocatus video on the policy recommendations for competition. If you are interested in seeing more content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow Advocata on all social media platforms to never miss out on our latest content. Consider supporting Advocata by becoming an individual subscriber. Gain access to our weekday media monitoring of economic news, exclusive Advocata events, and more. To learn more, visit us at support.advocata.org.